Hello world, happy new year, and welcome to the 218th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. In a previous video series, I created my own dividend tracker where I was able to keep track of basically all my investments and when the dividends pay out. And I was pretty happy with that success. And one of the things I really wanted to do was build a um, comprehensive tax estimator. And so I retired from the military in 2020. And ever since then, life has just had a lot of changes. And it's been difficult for me to um, really get my taxes in order. So um, previous to retiring from the military, since our paychecks are very static, I have been able to get my taxes plus or minus $500. So either a 500 refund or I owed 500, which is like a very good sweet spot. I know I have a Indian audience. And so in the U.S., uh, at least for good financial discipline is not owing more than 500 and not getting a refund of more than 500 because you could have gotten that money earlier in the year and used it better than uh, the U.S. government. And so uh, if you want to watch my dividend series, you can click here and watch the first video, which has links to the subsequent videos. But today we're just going to uh, experiment with a bare bones tax estimator and build from there. So if you're not familiar with how the U.S. tax works, we have a progressive tax system, which means you are taxed as your income grows. So if you made 23200 and you're married... Uh, you would only be taxed at 10%. But if you make $22,201, you that $1 would be taxed at 12%, all the way up to $94,300. If you made $94,301, that one extra dollar would be taxed at 22%, and so on and so forth, all the way up to our ta max tax bracket, which is 37%, which is for married filing jointly at $731,200. We also have options of doing single filers for single people who aren't married or for people who are maybe managing or have their mom living with them or something where they're the head of the household but not necessarily married. And then some married people just file single based off of their taxes. In the U.S. at least we have that option. Um, I'm married filing jointly, so that's what this video will be about. But in future videos, maybe we'll have drop-down me uh, menus to um, select the different ones. And so here are the tax brackets, is what they're called. And then at a very simplified measure, you take how much you uh, made in the year, and then we get what's called a standard deduction. And that's uh, a deduction that the, just the government gives you to lower your income just for, you know, living and working and having kids and things of that nature. So I'm married filing jointly, so my deduction will be 29200 And again, at the highest simple level, I'm oversimplifying it, but you just take your income minus the standard deduction and the rest of it gets applied to those tax brackets. I won't go into alternative minimum tax. But this is a way of preventing, um, at least the people with this political ideology believe it's a way to prevent rich people from um, exempting too much stuff. We won't talk about the deductions here. Um, my kids are older, but if you have kids, and uh, I'll do this in subsequent videos, you'll want to add earned income tax credit, child tax credit, things of that nature. And so uh, capital gains, we will we will implement, but at a simplified version and not at this level here. And then, um, yeah. So that's what uh, that's just a brief high level versus of taxes. And so, so let's go over what it looks like first. I hard coded this information in, but we can accept input later on. So basically, I said that our W two, which is uh, a basic paycheck working for a normal company. I'm going to say our income is 3,846, basically to get to $100,000 income. And then we're going to pay $350 every paycheck. And so a lot of civilian jobs 
pay you 26 paychecks, right? Every two weeks, no matter which, uh, how it falls in the month. So 26 paychecks. And then we're going to do a little print statement at the end of that and say the total federal tax for the income of whatever we entered is and then give you our total tax. So let's run this. So the total federal tax for an income of $99,999.99, so basically $100,000, would be, assuming you pay $350 a paycheck and you're married filing jointly, you would get a $1,068 or $1,068 refund, right? Because this is the total federal tax is a negative number, so that would be a refund. And so that's the simple version of this. So let's kind of go into the code now. And so the standard deduction, so this is where all my constants are going to go, right here at the top. So the standard deduction for married filing jointly was 29200 if you remember. A single was 14600 Head of household was 21900 So I just hard-coded married filing jointly. And now what we're going to do is put all the tax brackets in, in a tuple, right? So we're going to say brackets equals, and then we're going to do a, a list. So 23,200, which is the, the max right here, is at 10%. 94,300 is at 12%. All the way up until 731,200%. Anything more than that is taxed at 37%. All right, so this is, right, we have two a tuple here. So we're going to start off saying tax is zero, and the previous bracket limit is zero, right? So we're, we're kind of setting up this for loop that we're about to get into. And so for bracket limit and rate in brackets, and so... These haven't been defined anywhere yet, right? We just started this for loop, and what we're saying is that we're going to call this right here a bracket limit and this a rate, the second one a rate. Now, if you don't know about Python, then this might be confusing. Like, why didn't you define these variables? But you, you are defining them now, right? We could put this as anything we want. For California, Nevada equals brackets. And it's not going to know that. It's just going to think that this is called California and this is Nevada just because you put it in order. So, but for this purpose, for bracket limit and rate in brackets, so it's going to iterate through each one. If the income is greater than the bracket limit, then the tax plus equals the bracket limit minus previous bracket limit times the rate. So what the heck does that mean? So let's say our income is $23,300. So if the income is greater than the first bracket limit, right, because this is a for loop, which it is, then the tax is going to be the bracket limit minus the previous bracket limit, right, um, which is only going to be $100. The previous bracket limit is zero right now times the rate so we are in this one right here so it's going to do a hundred dollars times twelve percent and then it's going to do else the tax equals income minus previous times rate and then break so that's complicated i'm just going to leave this on here for a couple minutes so you can read it and then eventually, if there's no remainder left, it's just going to break out of this. So, um, but until then, it's going to keep changing the previous bracket limit. So $100,000 is going to keep iterating through this one, then this one, and then it's going to stop at this one. Only the remainder is going to be taxed at 22%. This one, the remainder was already taxed at 12%. And then the rest of it will be taxed at the 10%, which is kind of the reverse way of doing a progressive method. And then it's going to return just the tax. It's going to keep the total tax amount until you return that tax. And then the W-2 income details. 
So this is where you would put your job income. Right now it's hard coded in, but we can ask for input later. Um, if you have a second job, like your wife's job, you can do second job income equals. And then you'll also want to take out the federal taxes paid. Now, uh, Social Security and Medicare in the, in the U.S. is a percentage. Um, we're going to go into advanced taxes right now, but there is a limit that you could put in Social Security. But Social Security and Medicare are not calculated in your federal tax return. You just pay it. Um, there is no limit to Medicare, right? So the more you pay, the more you'll pay into Medicare. And so this is the federal taxes withheld. And then I also put in, because I'm not showing you what I really make, I have my own tax estimator here, but I have my military retirement income, which comes on a 1099R. And then I have to pay taxes into that, federal taxes. I have dividend income from my stocks. I have business income from small business. I have a YouTube channel, which earns money. Uh, that is zero. I have miscellaneous income as well from other things. And then capital gains for when I sell stocks. Um, right now, I just have this hard-coded in there. But in the future videos, we are going to uh, correctly, correctly, what's it called, um, take into consideration these tax brackets here for capital gains, right? Just because I sold... $15,000 in profit doesn't mean I'm going to get taxed at the normal income levels. But that's how I currently have the math now. And then we're going to do income. So the income equals job income times 26. Uh, if you don't have 26 paychecks, you'll want to, let's say you get paid twice a month like military members, you'll want to change this to 24. My retirement income is only 12 equal payments. I only get paid once a month. The dividend income, it is what it is. Business income plus YouTube income. Uh, and then I would add miscellaneous income and capital gains. Uh, if that applies to you, you would just add miscellaneous like that. And then add capital gains like that so we can keep this in here that's fine let me press enter so and then the I put this variable as AGI adjusted adjusted gross income this isn't actually correct for all my tax nerds but then I take this total income where I added everything minus the standard deduction which we defined up here and that's our adjustable gross income. That's not how it really is. Adjusted gross income comes first, and then you adjust your income, then you minus your standard deduction, but this is the bare bones. And then total taxes paid is going to be the job taxes paid, um, which is 26, because uh, it matches your paycheck. And then the retirement taxes paid, which is 12 times. And then your total tax equals the calculated federal tax, and we're going to pass it this AGI here because only your adjusted gross income gets applied to these tax brackets, right? Minus the total taxes paid, which we just defined here, and that gives us this total tax. And then I just printed it in a formatted print string. So the total federal tax for an income is, okay, let's fix this now. I want it in integer so I can get rid of the repeating decimal points is an integer of this income right here. I don't want the AGI, right? Because that's if I make $100,000, I want to know how much my total taxes are. Uh, this right here, this colon, comma, this gives the one thousandths comma uh, separator. You can also do two. I, I believe it's 2F, which will give you a, uh, or I think it's 0.2F like that, which would give you decimal points if you want them. And then is an integer of this total tax. Same thing, I want the comma separator. And then we print it. There we go. So the total federal tax for an income of $99,900 is a refund of 
$1,068. So that, like I said, this is just the start. And uh, we'll be able to collect some input, whether maybe from Excel, because in my job or in my income, my military retirement has a cost of living adjustment that starts in one Jan. But my job has a merit increase or cost of living adjustment in March, which affects April. So I can't just times it by 26, right? Because the, the pay is going to change. And so we're going to handle all of that in future videos. So please consider subscribing if this interests you. Like this video and leave a comment. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.